friends good morning welcome to this episode of daybreak god's mercies are new every morning so let's praise god through this song every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory every knee shall bow but your throne in worship you'll be exalted oh god and your kingdom shall not pass away oh ancient of days clapping your hands over your head blessing and honor glory and honor be unto the ancient of days from every nation all of creation bow before the ancient of days every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory every knee shall bow with your throne in worship you'll be exalted oh god and your kingdom shall not pass away oh ancient of days Bless them together. Blessing and, and honor, honor, glory and power, be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne. His power as you praise him today believe there is nothing that he cannot accomplish for you as you believe in his almighty presence for you as you praise him as you rejoice in the glory of the Lord today thank you father thank you Jesus you change all things for us oh God you change all things for our good as we rejoice as we call on you as we bless you lord you change us you change situations you change oh god everything that you may be glorified blessing and honor glory and power be to the ancient of day from every nation all of creation bow before the ancient of days every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory every knee shall bow with your throne in worship you'll be exalted oh god and your kingdom shall not pass away oh ancient of days kingdom shall reign your kingdom shall reign over all the earth sing unto the ancient of days none can compare to your matchless earth sing unto the ancient of days once again we bless him together blessing and honor glory and power be into the ancient of days from every nation all of creation bow before the ancient of days every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory every nation bow at your throne in worship you'll be 
exalted, O God, and your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days, O ancient of days, O ancient of days. That indeed was a spiritually uplifting song. Certain messages and stories have a lot to teach us. So let's hear to one such message. Friends, morning has broken. And let us make this day with a virtue embedded in our hearts. There is the story of a bamboo in the garden of an ancient kingdom. The master of the garden would walk in the coolness of the day and appreciate all the plants in the garden. And he appreciated the bamboo most because of its elegance, because of his beauty because of his simple nature and he would stand under the bamboo and in the gentle breeze the bamboo will bend down and caress the face of the master and the master would gently run his fingers on the leaves and the small branches of the bamboo and he would appreciate the bamboo every day growing up elegantly. And there came the day when the master stopped and looked at it once and with a definite mind. And the master knew that the bamboo is ready for further use. And he generally came and spoke to the bamboo, I am going to use you. And the bamboo was so proud. The bamboo said, oh yes, master, use me. I am for you. And the master said, in order to use you, I must cut you down. And this was a terrible news for the bamboo. And the bamboo said, please use me, but do not cut me down. And the master said, if I use you, I must cut you down. And so finally, the bamboo said, I am ready to be cut down. And the master said, I not only cut you down, but I need to chop off your branches and leaves. And that was another terrible news for the bamboo. The bamboo said, you may cut me down. Let me lie in the ground with all my branches and leaves. And the master said, if I use you, I must chop off your branches and leaves. And so finally, with the pain, the bamboo agreed. And the master continued, I must also split you into two. I must cut you through the heart and split you into two. And it was again another great pain for the bamboo. And the bamboo said, how come that you need to cut me into two pieces? And the master said, if I want to use you, you must be split into two. And finally, the bamboo gave the consent. And there came a day when the workers came and cut down the bamboo, chopped off its branches and leaves, and split it into two. And the workers took it to the other side of the property where there was a dry land which is to be cultivated. And uh, on the other side was a spring, and the workers placed the bamboo 
the one end of the bamboo on the spring and through the bamboo the water flew and the other side was placed on the dry land and they cultivated the paddy the rice and in due season there was a big harvest the bamboo saw the big harvest and was delighted the bamboo forgot about the pain of being cut down about the pain of being chopped off its branches and leaves about the pain of being cut through the heart splitting into two now the bamboo understood why it was created for the bamboo said now i have given an abundant harvest this is what i was created for my dear friends the story of the bamboo is our own story because we can always remain comfortable we can always remain untouched we can always remain in our physical external beauty and appearance but then we cannot be useful to others unless we are vulnerable unless we are broken and unless we are able to split into two and that is what we must understand through the word of god in matthew chapter 10 verse 39 he who cares only for his own life will lose it he who loses his life for my sake will find it and in the gospel john chapter 15 verse 13 there is no greater love than this that one gives one's life for one's friends let us be ready to be vulnerable broken for others let this be the virtue that we embed today in our hearts I'm sure this message was an enriching one. All saints were just people like us, but the only difference was they had trust in God. So, let us hear to one such story of a saint. Saint Clare was born at Montefalco, Italy. In the year 1268, into a well-to-do family, the daughter of Damiano and Iacopa Vengente. Claire's father, Damiano, had built a hermitage within the town where Claire's older sister, Joan, and her friend, Andreola, lived as Franciscan tertiaries as part of the secular Third Order of St. Francis. In 1274, when Claire was six years of age, The Bishop of Spoleto permitted Joan to receive more sisters, and it was at this time that Claire joined the Third Order of St. Francis, moving into the hermitage and adopting the Franciscan habit. In 1278, the community had grown sufficiently large that they had to build a larger hermitage farther from town. In 1290, Claire, her sister Joan, and their companions sought to enter the monastic life in a more strict sense and they made application to the bishop of Spoleto as the third order of St Francis was not yet established the bishop established their monastery in Montefalco according to the rule of St Augustine Claire made her vows of poverty chastity and obedience and became an Augustinian nun her sister Joan was elected as the first abbess and their small hermitage was dedicated as a monastery in 1291 Joan died after which Claire was elected abbess Claire was initially reluctant to accept her position after the intervention of the bishop of Spoleto Claire finally accepted her position as abbess out of obedience to the bishop 
1294 was a decisive year in Claire's spiritual life. At the celebration of the Epiphany, after making a general confession in front of all her fellow nuns, she fell into ecstasy and remained in that state for several weeks. Unable to eat, the other nuns sustained Claire's life by feeding her sugar water. During this time, Claire reported having a vision in which she saw herself being judged in front of God. Claire also reported having a vision of Jesus dressed as a poor traveler. She described his countenance as being overwhelmed by the weight of the cross and his body as showing signs of fatigue. During the vision, Claire knelt in front of him and while trying to stop him, she asked, My Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered her, I have looked all over the world for a strong place where I might plant this cross firmly and I have not found any. After she reached for the cross, making known her desire to help him carry it, he said to her, Claire, I have found a place for my cross here. I have finally found someone to whom I can trust my cross. And he planted it in her heart. The intense pain that she felt in her whole body upon receiving the cross in her heart remained with her. The rest of her years were spent in pain and suffering, and yet she continued to joyfully serve her fellow nuns as their abbess. In 1303, Claire was able to build a church in Montefalco, which would not only serve as a chapel for the nuns, but also as a church for the town. The first stone was blessed by the Bishop of Spoleto, and the church was dedicated to the Holy Cross. Claire served as abbess, teacher, mother, and spiritual directress of her nuns. While Claire's reputation for holiness and wisdom attracted visitors to the monastery, she continued to govern her sisters wisely, careful not to disrupt the communal harmony and the necessary day-to-day -day management of the monastery's domestic affairs. Claire served as abbess for 16 years, but by August 1308, she became so ill that she was bedridden. On the 15th of August, she asked to receive the last rites, and on the next day, she sent for her brother to come to the monastery. Claire made her last confession on the 17th of August and died the next day. Immediately following Claire's death, her heart was removed from her body, and upon inspection it was reported that symbols of Christ's passion, a crucifix and a scourge, were found in her heart. Other historians report that an autopsy was conducted and a small crucifix was found in her. Upon hearing the news of this and other signs, the vicar of the Bishop of Spoleto traveled to Montefalco burning with indignation, suspecting that the nuns of the convent had planted the symbols. A commission consisting of physicians, jurists, and theologians was assembled to conduct an investigation, which subsequently ruled out the possibility of fabrication or invention. The vicar of the Bishop of Spoleto, who came to Montefalco as an inquisitor, eager to punish those responsible for fraud, came to be convinced of the authenticity of the findings after personally verifying that the signs were not the result of trickery. The body of St. Clair remains incorrupt, although the skin of her hands has darkened over time. St. Clair's heart is displayed for the veneration at the Church of St. Clair in Montefalco, where her body, dressed in her Augustinian habit, rests under the high altar. The canonization process was initiated in 1328, but it was not until 1737 that Claire was beatified by Pope Clement XII. On December 8, 1881, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, Pope Leo XIII canonized Claire as St. Claire of Montefalco in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, over 500 years after her death. Let us pray. O oh Lord, you gave St. Clair an intense devotion to your passion on the cross and confirmed your blessing upon her love of you with signs. Let us imitate her courage to take up whatever task you give us 
and to remember your passion constantly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us remember in our prayers this day to ask our Lord to have compassion on those who suffer or are in grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Let them remember that you are full of compassion and answer our every prayer in your time and thus have hope. We ask this through the intercession of Mary, Mother of God. Amen. Let's follow the footsteps of the saint and learn to depend on the Word of God to strengthen ourselves. Let's listen to the promised words of today. First, let me read the passage and then we shall meditate on it. And Pharisees came up to him and tested him by asking, Is it lawful to divorce one's wife for any cause? He answered, Have you not read that he who made them from the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one. So they are no longer two but one. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. They said to him, Why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce and to put her away? He said to them, For your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, Whoever divorces his wife, except for unchastity, and to marry another, commits adultery. The disciples said to him, If such is the case of a man with his wife, it is not expedient to marry. But he said to them, Not all can receive this precept, but only those to whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who have been made so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. He who is able to receive this, let him receive it. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Dear friends, today we are given two themes to look upon, meditate on, both related to sexuality and ma marriage. The first question deals with the divorce. Is it lawful, is it allowed to divorce a wife? Is divorce allowed? The second deals with the celibacy or unmarried life. The first question is presented because it was a very actively disputed question during the time of Jesus. Moses had given the provision that, the, that a divorce is possible. A valid marriage can be divorced in case a partner has been proved of unchastity, of adultery. So normally it is only a man who can divorce the wife. The wife had no chance or right to divorce her husband. That is already in, in, uh, partiality in the law of Moses itself. But then, during the time of Jesus, the question was, it is already agreed that the divorce is possible, it is legal, but for what case, what instance? So one party, the liberal party, the Hillel, the Rabbi Hillel said, divorce is possible in case the, the man finds something improper in the woman. That means if he doesn't like the woman, the way, the way she looks or the way he, she cooks, etc. If there is anything that is displeasing to the husband, can divorce the wife. Only he has to put a note. So give a certificate of divorce. And that means he has to pay double the amount of the dowry he, has he had given for marrying. So what is important is a certificate. And then came the Rabbi Shammai, who is more strict, rigorous. He said, divorce is possible only in one case. That is of infidelity. If the wife is proved to be, uh, have been unfaithful to her husband, if she has been uh, proved of adultery that she can be sent away. Now the question is asked to Jesus, what do you think? And Jesus said, no divorce is possible whatsoever. No possibility. Divorce is not allowed. Because God has created man and woman. Once the, a man marries a woman and they are united as one, then 
what God has united, men shall not break asunder at all. So in the teaching of Jesus, no possibility of divorce. And then the question, why this? Comes the explanation. Because of the hardness of heart. And then Jesus goes on to say, unless there is the chance case of adultery and chastity, divorce is not possible. So does it mean that if a woman or a a uh, man is proved to have had sex with another person outside the wedlock, are they to be divorced? That's not what the church understands. So here, the church interprets this law. This marriage, if it is an invalid marriage, for example, a brother marrying his sister, or a person close relationship, or a person who has no right to marry, an invalid marriage can be divorced. So it's not divorce, divorcing, it is only declaring the marriage invalid. So a valid marriage cannot be um, divorced, broken. That's what Jesus is telling. That's what the church is teaching now. Now then goes on to explain the, and the um, fact of celibacy. So the eunuchs. So in the, in the time of Jesus, there were the people who were made eunuchs, castrated so that they could be the um, servants of the court of the queen. So made eunuchs by man. And others are born eunuchs. They have no uh, sexuality, no man, neither man nor woman. By nature, he is incapable of marriage, marrying, uh, conducting a valid marriage. Then Jesus speaks to the third type. That is, one renounces marriage for the kingdom of heaven. That is the basis of the celibacy, what the Catholic Church is preaching and teaching and practicing. So this is for the kingdom of God. One dedicates oneself for the kingdom of God so that he doesn't have the time First of all, he doesn't want to get involved in a family life. So he doesn't want to commit to one person alone, but remains available to the entire community, and he is in the service of the Lord, he or she. And this is a kind of service that one, is taken, one has taken, but this is also a gift. Nobody can choose this by oneself unless it is given. So God calls persons to a celibate life, totally dedicated to the kingdom of God. What does that mean? To be dedicated to the kingdom of God. You have no personal interest whatsoever. You are a messenger of the kingdom of God. You live the, the kingdom in your reality here. As Jesus said, after their death, they will not be marrying or giving in marriage. They will be like angels. So it's a kind of eschatological sign. God is enough for me. God is enough for me and I am totally dedicated to God's service so that I am totally available to my fellow human beings. So this is for the kingdom of God, for the service of God, for the service of humanity. One dedicates oneself as a response to the call to celibacy. That's what Jesus is telling us. So both are valid and needed. So no divorce of a valid marriage and the celibate life is a gift and it is a response to God's gift so that in order to dedicate oneself to the service of God and humanity. Heavenly Father, we thank you for creating us man and woman to express your face in the world. We read in the book of Genesis that you created us man and woman in his, your own image and likeness. And this image and likeness becomes fruitful in the marriage and reproduction of children. At the same time, Father, you have also called some of us to be celibate, to be totally dedicated to you and to your kingdom. Father, enlighten our minds to accept, to understand and accept the mystery of this marriage as well as celibacy and remain totally faithful to you in whatever state, married or unmarried, celibate, totally dedicated, totally faithful to you. This prayer we make through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we are reaching to the end of this episode, let us thank God for filling us with His Word and praise Him through this song. Darkness opened my eyes 
let me see beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you are my god you are all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you are my god you are all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me king of all days o oh, so highly exalted glorious in heaven above humbly you came to the earth created all for love sake became poor here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you are my god you are all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me here i am to worship here i am to bow down Here I am to say that you are my god you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me I never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross i never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross here i am to worship here i am to Here I am to say that you are my God. You are all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that. You are my God. You are all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to be. I wish you all a day full of joy, peace. and divine blessings